ברוכים הבאים, Welcome. Today is Yom HaZikaron, the day we remember and cherish the fallen IDF soldiers. We are here to show our respect to all those hurt in Israel's various wars. As an Israeli, Yom HaZikaron has always been a central part of my identity. It is a day that reminds us in the word of Nathan Alterman that the country wasn't given to us on a silver platter. It is a day that reminds us of those who fought so that the Jewish state will turn from a dream to reality. It is a reminder that we cannot take for granted even the simplest moment of the day. The children playing at the park, going to work, taking a walk outside. We have a chance to experience all this happiness thanks to those who fought for us. Standing here in Memphis, it's heartwarming to see that this day isn't important only to those who grew up in Israel, but to Jews around the world who proudly support our national homeland and who gather to remember the price paid in blood to keep it safe. Every name has a face, and every person has a family. Today we remember not, not only those directly hurt, injured, or killed in Israel wars and in terror attacks, but also the outer circles impacted by these personal tragedies. We remember that 18 years old had parents and grandparents, that reservists had children, that every person hurt has friends and relatives, who too were affected by the injury or death of their loved one. Zev Jabotinsky once said, a pioneer doesn't live for himself, but for those who come after him. It's possible not all those who were killed view themselves as pioneers or leaders, but nonetheless their death were part of the ongoing struggle for Israel's security and prosperity. It is our job to make sure their life and death weren't in vain. As we gather here in Memphis, we remember that Yom HaZikaron isn't only a personal day of grieving, rather it's a national day of remembrance, and as such, it's also the day to share that the story of the fallen IDF soldiers our community. With us today, they are representative of the Jewish community of Memphis. Torami Zion, representative of the partnership between Shoham and Memphis, and of course the wonderful student and teachers of Barbu. Today we show our unity as a proud Jewish community. In this room and on Zoom, there are people with many different backgrounds, men and women, young and old, from America and from Israel. Despite these differences, we are all here. We are here because we have a strong connection to the Jewish state. We are here because we know someone whose friend or relative was hurt while serving Israel. We are here to learn about the meaning of this day, to talk about the struggles Israel faced and still faces. We are here to show our solidarity with others. We are here to remember. The first time I heard that a soldier I knew had died in the army, I was in uniform myself. I got a call that said, Nadav died. I don't have details yet. I don't even remember who called me. I didn't cry. The first thing I thought about was how quickly I can get back home, to be there on time. Only hours, days, maybe weeks later, you can understand. I was released from the army a week before the Second Lebanon War began. On August 12, 2006, the ceasefire agreement was already written. I was watching my friend, Shai, being interviewed for a TV documentary show on the war. He is getting ready to go into Lebanon, next to his tank, wearing his uniform and is talking about not being afraid. My phone rings. On the other side was one of my soldiers. Shai is dead. He can't be dead. He's on TV. Less than an hour later, the phone rang again. Ben Aya is dead. Ben Aya, weren't you just saying it was Shai? Nobody knows what's right and what's wrong. Complete chaos among us. Phone again. It's them both. Shai and Ben Aya were company commanders in the same battalion that I was. On August 12, 2006, we lost them both. Everyone in Israel knows someone. My story is not unique. A brother, a sister, a parent, a family member, a friend, a friend of a friend. Everyone knows someone who died in Israel. יזכור עם ישראל את בניו ובנותיו אשר חירפו נפשם במאבק על המדינה בדרך ואת חיילי צבא ההגנה לישראל אשר נפלו במלחמות ישראל. יזכור ישראל ויתברך בזרעו ויבעל על זיו העלומים וחמדת הגבורה וקדושת הרצון ומסירות הנפש. 
אשר נפגעו במערכות הכבדות. תהיו גיבורי הדרור והניצחון, הנאמנים והאמיצים, חתומים בלב ישראל לדור ודור. איסקו, may Hashem remember his sons and daughters who exposed themselves to mortal danger in those days of struggle prior to the establishment of the state of Israel. May Hashem remember the soldiers of the Israeli Defense Force who fell in the wars of Israel. May the people of Israel keep them in their memory and be blessed with their seed. Let them mourn the splendor of youth, the charm of valor, the holiness of will, and the devotion of sacrifice, which came to an end in the heavy battles. May the loyal and valiant heroes of freedom and victory be sealed forever within the hearts of Israel. construction worker stood still, the trucker, the lawyer, the salesman, the buyer. They bowed their heads, the cleaner, the policeman, the doctor, the secretary, the kindergarten teacher, the artist, and the coffeehouse goers, solemnly united, bereaved mothers, anguished fathers, widows, brothers and aunts, childhood friends, grandmothers, grandfathers, daughters and sons. Muted is the, is the division of left and right, religious and secular. Erased are the differences, gone is the ethnic divide. Two minutes of communion, two minutes of unity, two minutes of silence to remember and never forget, two minutes of courage and strength. Every Yom Zikro in Israel, a siren is heard all over the community, during which Israelis stop everything, including driving on highways, and stand in silence, commemorating the fallen and showing respect. Yom Zikaron is dedicated to remembering the story of the fallen IDF soldiers who put their life in danger for each one of us. This year, Memphis remembers the story of three remarkable soldiers. We thank each one of them for their spirit, values, and journey they had. The first soldier is Sarit Senor, a Shoham resident who passed away 18 years ago while serving the IDF. Sergeant Sarit Schneor. Sarit Schneor was born in 1984, a daughter to Zehava and Shimon, and sister to Chen Yuval and Tair. Sarit grew up in Shoham, Israel. She graduated from Shoham High School with honors. Her teachers say she was a diligent and talented student. Her dream was studying medicine after her military service. Sarit aspired to excel in all that she did. 
She was a perfectionist. Among other things, she also excelled in sports and participated in various programs for athletes in school. Sarit was known for her unique way of connecting to people. Friendship, volunteering, and social justice were highly valued to her. She was always surrounded by friends. She is remembered by her wide smile, great sense of humor, and addicting laugh. Sarit was very shy, modest, and determined to achieve her goals. Sarit was drafted into the Field Intelligence Force of the IDF on January 26, 2003. She served as an, observant, as an observation post commander in Nahal Oz, watching over the Gaza Strip. On Friday, October 24th, 2003, at 4 a.m., a terrorist inflirtated the base she served in and started firing at the soldiers. Sarit, who was at her room at the time, went out at the sound of the shooting and was killed by gunfire. Sarit was 19 when she died. May her memory be a blessing. Sarit is part of our life. We remember her story and dedicate this candle. Rui Klein is a name that until a few days ago held no meaning to me. He was a complete stranger about whom I had never heard and whom I had never met. Yet an image of the last seconds of his life will leave my mind. Roe was a son. He was a brother, he was a husband to Sarah, and a father to three-year-old Gilad and one-year-old Gilad. But most of all, Roe was a hero for all of us. He was a face and a name to many Jewish heroes spanning the generations. Roe's funeral was July 27, 1975. That day would have been his 31st birthday. Major Roe Klein was a Golani Brigade Deputy Commander. He was killed in an ambush among the houses of Beit Jebel, a large village in southern Lebanon. Hezbollah terrorists killed eight soldiers, including Roe, and injured nearly two dozen. There were two other soldiers next to Roe. A hand grenade was thrown at them, and Roe shouted, Grenade! He then threw his body over it, sacrificing his life for the sake of his soldiers, who later attributed being alive to his act of selflessness. In his last seconds of life, Roe muscled the strength to shout, Shema Yisrael, the prayer that Jews have prayed for centuries, declaring our belief in God and in a better world. The prayer that so many Jewish martyrs throughout the generations called out as they were being led to their deaths. My mind can't stop conjuring what it must have been like in those last seconds of his life when Roe made a split-second decision to jump on the grenade. I imagine Roe seeing his beloved family in his mind's eye, his wife and their two young children, who would now grow up knowing him only from the stories they'd be told or from pictures that they'd be shown. Roe is no stranger after all. He is each of our husbands, sons, and brothers. His face is the face of each of our heroes and martyrs. Roe is a part of our life. We remember his story and a cake with candle for him. It's 
אצלנו בגן יש הרבה חבורות, יש כאלה נחשבים, יש כאלה שפחות. אבל מי לא שמע על קופצי הנדנדות, מרים להם כפיים, מלמדים אותם לנחות. מורמים על נס הדגל, גאוות כל האזור, רק לפעמים כשהם קופצים רחוק, הם שוכחים לחזור. מתחת לשמיכה הם מדברים ועומד על אלוהי בשבילו כל עולמו מוגן מתחת לשמיכה אצלנו בגן נפרדים בשמחה כי היום לא ארוך ונפגשים שוב מחר חוץ מאלה שפתאום לא חוזרים יותר לגן אמרו לי שהם רק עברו דירה מעבר לענן אז בלילות קרים עם פנס מתחת לשמיכה הם מדברים אצלנו בגדוד יש המון ילדים, את חלקם אני אוהב, את חלקם אני לא אכיר. אהההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההה
下来。